All right, so the purpose of uh, this video is to go over section 5.1, which is uh, properties of a parallelogram. And uh, this uh, screen recording is intended to follow on from the, uh, the uh, properties of parallelogram uh, geometry sketchpad activity. And so by now you should have um, a good idea of some of the properties of a parallelogram. And now we're going to go through um, a formal um, treatment of those properties. And so as noted in the um, uh, objective, the intention is, uh, the objective is to apply the definition of a parallelogram and um, the um, uh, subsequent theorems about the properties of a parallelogram. And so by definition, we have over here our definition of a parallelogram, which is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Um, and so that is its definition. And so here we have um, a diagram of a um, given quadrilateral, which is a parallelogram. And so we can begin by marking the uh, parallel um, pairs of sides. Um, and this, of course, will result in um, other known information. Um, specifically, um, we have, um, with our diagonal AC drawn, we have alternate interior angles. Um, on both sides of the uh, diagonal um, and we also have side AC as a reflexive side and so as noted below um, we can prove the two triangles um, that is triangle uh, ADC to be congruent um, to um, triangle uh, CBA um, and we would be able to uh, do that proof via um, the angle-side-angle angle, um, postulate. And of course, uh, once we have the congruency of the triangles, this in turn allows us to make um, additional markings um, using um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Um, uh, and so if we mark the additions, effectively what we are doing is um, highlighting all of the different properties of a parallelogram which will also be referenced in the theorems below. And so, um, based on our markings, we've indirectly um, proved um, theorem 5.1, which says that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Theorem 5.2, which says the opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. And so we have shown one pair, uh, which is angle B congruent to angle D, um, and we would um, uh, be able to show that angle C and angle A were congruent um, if you take note of what the next question is suggesting. What do we notice about consecutive angles of a parallelogram? If we remember the um, so-called fun rule with um, the same side interior angles, uh, we know that same side interior angles between parallel lines are supplements of each other and so we could use that additional information to show that in addition to angle B equaling angle D that angle A uh, would equal angle C. Okay and so this moves us um, uh, beyond um, the um, two triangles that we have now so we've got um, we've established opposite sides both pairs of opposite sides are parallel both pairs of opposite sides are equal and uh, um, opposite angles are congruent and what we're now going to do is uh, introduce uh, theorem 5.3 which says the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other so bisect uh, cut in half and so uh, that would mean that E according to the theorem E would be both the midpoint of BD and the midpoint of AC okay and what we're going to do um, as we've done in the past, uh, is prove the theorem before we're able to use it in other proofs. Um, and so, as usual, uh, what we'll do is we'll begin by uh, marking our diagram. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, there's a lot of information we could mark on the diagram. Um, I'm going to um, uh, confine those markings to the ones that we need. So we have AB congruent to uh, DC. Um, and we also have side AB parallel to side uh, DC. And what I'm going to do is mark 
some angle numbers, um, angle 1 and angle 2, um, and I'm doing this because uh, those angles are in a specific relationship. There are alternate interior angles between parallel lines, um, and then I'm going to mark off angle 3 and angle 4. Okay, and so uh, now we turn our attention to the proof. The first thing we'll do is restate our given information, and so we are given um, uh, parallelogram A, B, C, D, um, and that's our given information with diagonals B, D, and A, C, but um, that's uh, not particularly material in this case. Um, what we're attempting to do is prove that BE equals ED, AE equals EC, and as you can see from the markings, we're going to be using uh, triangle congruency, and so um, we'll start by making a statement about the sides. Uh, AB is congruent to DC, um, and that is um, a definition, um, oh, I beg your pardon, uh, that is, let me just erase that, it's the parallel, which is the definition of um, the opposite sides congruent um, would be because of theorem 5.1, and so we have theorem 5.1, um, we also know that um, AB is parallel to uh, DC, that is a definition um, of a parallelogram, which we can abbreviate as PALM, parallelogram, um, and we are then able to make the statement that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, and that is because parallel lines imply uh, congruent alternate interior angles. Okay, and so um, our final um, or penultimate step in our proof would be to make our congruency statement. Um, so I'm going to say that triangle A, B, E uh, is congruent to, and if I'm going from A to B to E, um, then I'm going to go from C to D to E. Uh, and my reason is angle, side, angle, uh, angle 3, side AB, angle 1, and so you, we clearly have the angle, side, angle postulate. And my final statement, uh, BE congruent to ED, and AE congruent to EC, and that is because those are corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, and so um, that uh, completes the first um, page, um, and uh, we'll move on to our next page. Okay, and what we're going to do here is just a couple of application problems using the theorems 5.12 uh, and 3. Um, so we're given parallelograms um, and we are um, finding the values of x and y and what we're going to do is establish our equations um, using um, the properties of parallelograms and then solve uh, for x and y respectively and so we begin um, with the x in this case 4x is equal to 8 because those are opposite sides of a parallelogram and therefore equal and so uh, very simple um, equation, x is equal to 2. Uh, similarly, we can make the statement that uh, 3y plus 4 is equal to 13 for the same reason, and then we are left to solve for y. Okay, in the um, second parallelogram application problem, um, we are going to be um, finding missing angles, and so uh, in this case we are using the the parallel lines and specifically the alternate interior angle um, relationship um, and so we'll begin by uh, equating um, 4y plus 5 um, to 45 degrees because those are alternate interior angles between parallels and therefore congruent um, and we can now go ahead and solve for y uh, y is 10 and if we substitute that bit uh, back in, of course, 
we would realize that would give us 45 degrees. Um, now, if we look over at uh, the angle containing x, that's angle, uh, that angle is 11x. It is uh, alternate interior to an unknown angle. Um, and so what we need to do very quickly is take our triangle, uh, do 180 less 80 less 45, and we'll have the measure of the missing angle, which we can then equate uh, 11x to. And so 11x is going to equal uh, 55 degrees. Again, that is obtained by doing 180 less 80 less 45, and that gives us the value of x equal to 5. Okay. And now to the final um, uh, proof in the lesson. Um, uh, and so we are given that uh, ABCD is a parallelogram. Similarly, DEFG is a, a parallelogram. And we are asked to prove that angle B and angle F are congruent to each other. And so um, we will begin by restating our given. And so what we've been given is parallelogram A, B, C, D, and parallelogram uh, D, E, F, G, and those were both given. Um, we can um, make the statement that angle B is congruent to angle D, and we can also say that angle F is congruent to angle D, and that is for um, the same reason. Um, that is, that opposite angles of a parallelogram are um, congruent, and that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, theorem 5.2. Uh, opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent, and so uh, in our reasoning, uh, theorem 5.2, uh, and then we can um, make our final statement in the proof angle B congruent to angle F, um, and in this particular case we have B equal to D, F equal to D, and then uh, B equal to F, and so that is the transitive property, and you could also have used um, substitution instead. Okay, and so that ends the um, uh, screen recording, and at this point what you need to do is get started on the assignment, and as usual, focus your attention on the B-level assignment to begin with.